Okay, um, this little uh, tutorial here on how to use grid paper to be able to do some sort of sketch, hand sketch some standard um, drawings. The first one we're going to look at is an orthographic drawing. And orthographic drawings look at things in two dimensions. They look at things from the top and then they look at things from the side as well. So we're talking about a trinket box lid here now. So this is for my students at Girawin High. Um, let's start by the first thing is I've written down dotted some points here. First thing we need to do is choose a scale. Decide how big the drawing is going to be on the page. What will each one of these small squares that we see here, what will each one of these stand for in real life? Now I've decided that I'm going to make each one of these squares stand for 10 millimetres. It's probably about 5 millimetre squares at the moment. So I'm going to actually make the scale um, 1 to 2. So let's go, um, let's start with that. So the scale now is going to be um, 1 to 2. So one of these little squares, or two of these little squares, is going to equal to one, um, one 10 millimeter square. So working on that presumption, I know my trinket box lid is approximately 140 millimeters or 14 centimeters. So I need to count out 14 of these squares. So let's start from here. So there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Go down here again because it's a square, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Just by tracing this line down here and by looking across to there, I can see that that's the point of intersection. So there'll be my other edge. So I'm going to just draw some little lines like this just to train my eye to look along this. And I know that now I should have a square which is, I'm going to draw, trace the lines. So this square will be 14 of my grid graduations square, 14 on each side. And it represents something twice that big, which will be the actual size of your trinket box lid. All right, now I'm going to decide, because we're designing an edge, this is looking at the trinket box lid from the top. That's sometimes called a plan view or a top view. In orthographic projection, this usually the views are arranged in a certain fixed way. So the plan view sits up there on top, and um, underneath it will be what you'll see from the front. Now I know that it's about my grid's about 20, or my trinket box is about 20 millimeters. In uh, it's 19 millimeters thick. No, it's actually 12, 12 millimeters thick. So. Each one of these is representing squares 10 millimeters, so it's going to be a little bit above 10 millimeters. So I'm going to, I know it's going to be 14 millimeters long, so I can trace down the dimension from this edge and go along the bottom here. And I know I've got to stop just about there because that's where the edge will finish. So that'll be my 12 millimeters. So I'm going to trace it now. I'm doing all this freehand, and if it's a little bit scrappy, a bit messy, that's okay. This is a sketch. It's not um, done with rulers and pencils. It's just to give you a rough idea. Okay. So now we have a top view, and here we have a front view. And the front view is also called an elevation. Okay. Now we could do a side view as well, which we put off to our right. Uh, a little way, but it's no point because the side view is going to be the same as the elevation because the object is symmetrical and around all these ways. Okay, next thing is I'm going to decide my edging. Now, I'm just going to take a guess here and say that my edging is going to come in maybe 10 millimeters from each one of those edges. Now, you can actually work that out using your trinket box at proper and decide how big it's going to be. But I'd say at this point in time, I'm going to make it 10 millimeters coming in from the edge for the sake of simplicity of my drawing. Now, I'm going to do a very, try and do a light sketch. And I'm doing this in ink. You guys will probably do it in pencil, make it a bit easier. I'm going to do a very light sketch just to indicate where my edge is going to go to. Now I'm deciding to create a chamfered edge here, so I'm going to find that it will draw, and I'll notice a diagonal, as each of the diagonal surfaces meet each other, it will come down like that. Now if I do the same thing over here, um, I'm going to do from 
10 millimeters in, I'm going to do a diagonal edge and it's going to finish short of the bottom because it's a chamfer, not a bevel. Chamfer would normally be about 45 degrees. Now if you had a pencil, you had a rubber, you could rub this out, this little edge over here, and just rub it out, and you're left with the shape that you want. And these two lines, of course, should be exactly the same distance above the bottom edge, these two points here, to give you the same edge all the way around. Okay, so we've done this. Now let's look here, we've got this area to play with as our lid design. Now let's suppose that we want to do wood burning, which we could do. We can do a picture inside here, and if I then wanted to transfer that picture action to my lid, I can mark out where all the points cross and simply double the shape and expand it onto my lid. So let's just do a little example and say we want to make a, um, oh, what shall we do? I think I've done a tree in the past, so let's do a tree. We'll say we want to do a tree like this. There's some branches. Okay, and there's a trunk, and I'm going to do a tree like that. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I think, yeah, I'm happy with that. All right. Now, um, I've done this actually in, in real um, life. You can actually see it at, at school. I'm going to do some little bit of shading here just by drawing across like this. And I can do all this with the wood burner quite effectively. I'm not going to spend too long on it now for you. But just to give you an idea of sketching something before you actually start to make it. Because if we make it, we can't unmake it. And this gives us a good idea whether we like what we're going to do before we actually do it. It sort of saves a lot of costly mistakes. So I'm just doing some quick sketches here now to try and fill in this area here. Now when I want to not go over the edge, I usually start my pen line or my pencil line on the edge that I don't want to go over the top and go backwards like that. So there's my drawing. I think, okay, that looks good. It's going to sit on the page like that. That's my top view. Top view. That's my front view. That gives me all the information that I need. Now, across the other side of the page here, if I was going to transfer this drawing and do it to a full size, it means if instead of being one of these squares, instead of one of these squares being actually um, representing 10 millimeters, if I want the scale to be one to one, which is full size, each one of these squares has to equal one centimeter. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So I'd have to go across here now fourteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now you could save yourself all this trouble and just actually trace the shape out directly onto here if you wanted to. And I'm just going to illustrate this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and one more is 14. Okay, so if I took this line all the way up here, bring it across from the top, like that, there is my full size shape. Now this looks a little bit larger than the real shape, but it's possibly because my grid pattern doesn't exactly match up to 10 millimeters. But for the sake of our exercise, it's gonna do. Now I look back to my old original one and I saw that I needed to draw a line all the way around, which was one square in. Now that represents 10 millimeters. So because now the scale is one to one, I have to make this twice the size. So I'm gonna make in, this is now my square up here. Instead of being one small square, it's now one it's actually four small squares. So I'm doubling the size of this drawing. And I've got to draw a line all the way across representing the chamfer. There it goes. It's going to go down here. You see my lines can be fairly straight with the grid. The grid's very helpful. Okay. Cross down there. Down here. Do my diagonal like that and there's my shape now over here I can start to plot and trace a point so I'll fix a point let's say this point over here and I can mark it up and I know this point goes one two two point two grid spaces up and one two three four grid spaces in but because this is now twice the size I need to double it so it's eight spaces in 
which would take me to two, four, six, eight, and two grid spaces up, which makes it four grid spaces here. One, two, three, four. So that point is where my tree trunk starts. Now I can then trace the rest of the tree trunk this way by fixing various different points, noting where they are, and then just really doing a dot to dot drawing to get the, the shape and the scale of my box, my trinket box. The same thing under here to produce my edge. So that's the way that you can do a drawing or a scale and um, produce exactly the shape that you want in the size that you want. And this can later be used as a template to draw onto your trinket box lid. And then that is orthographic drawing. So orthographic shows you the front view, or sorry, the top view. Underneath it, it shows the, the front view, called the, or the elevation. And to one side, it would also show the end view, looking at it from the end. But it's the same thing, so we don't need to do that. So that's what I want you to do for the orthographic view of your drawing. Okay.